What's up, guys? We are here with Nate at the Benchmade Booth SHOT Show 2022. Dude, I'm excited to be here. I'm so stoked. Good to be back. Let's talk knives. What's up, guys? SHOT Show 2022. We are here with Nate. Nate, you've got a bunch of new knives. We do. Really excited to show these off. Like I said, great to be back. Um, just starting right off the bat. Let's just hop into yeah. it real oh, quick, absolutely. get started. You've, you've got some good stuff. Let's I'm gonna pick and in. choose a little bit. That's so cool. first one popping out here is the new 5370FE shootout. Uh, this is our new out the front automatic uh, featuring uh, CF Elite handle scales with a CPM Prewear blade, that flat earth Serico on it as well. Um, this one I'm really excited about with those PIM handles, keeps it light, still maintains that strength and rigidity. Um, it's really gonna be high high speed, low drag, uh, is really kind of what we were going for with that one. Also, MSRP's at 300, so for an out the front, we're gonna be looking at one of our most affordable models to date. Honestly, this thing is awesome. Uh, you guys have got the center firing here, the blade comes out the center, the button is really nice, but guys, the weight of this thing is insane. I. This is gonna be, that's gonna be a solid knife for you guys. It's really gonna be great for everyday carry. Also, I mean, if you're wearing gloves, it's gonna be great as well. Uh, you get a good purchase on it. We've got some really good kind of texturing on there. Kind of feels like a skate grip at the at the fore end of it. Um, yeah. You get your like heel a, flips yeah. in on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then that spine fire too. It's just more comfortable in the hand. You can everyday carry it with it being that lightweight too. It just sits in the pocket nice and easy. Run smooth, deep carry pocket clip. That's yeah, a winner, dude. Exactly. Really excited about that one. Um, kind of moving on, we'll move up straight into a brand new platform for us, uh, going into the Immunity family. So we're doing three different variants of this model. We're doing a full-size automatic. We're doing a full-size manual, as well as a uh, partial automatic. Not quite a mini. We're calling it a partial because it's just got a shorter blade. But this is a sub two and a half inch coming in at 2.49 inches, so we can say it's sub two and a half inch. Uh, automatic there, featuring M4 blade steel with that worn cliff blade shape, so that you really can focus the strength towards that tip, get oh, a lot of force yeah. on that. I actually really love the blade shape. Uh, this is one that I've been really excited to come see. You guys have an auto a folder and then a Cali auto. Exactly, right? yes. The partial version of it is going to be coming in at sub two inches. So it's using the same handle platform as the full size, um, but it does have that shorter blade on it. And each one of these will be coming with this lanyard you see here, and it's going to have a matching uh, aluminum pendant, I think we're calling it. And those ones, really that, that knife there, since it's so small, it's got those three finger grooves on it and that lanyard serves as kind of a fourth contact point for your pinky there so that you can get a full purchase on it. So it's small, but uh, fills up the hand, lets you get a nice purchase on it. I like it. I like that you can reach the tip. I love the blade shape. I mean, M4, I feel like this is like the, the cooler big brother to the sequel. I've always oh, wanted a sequel, dude. I'm still throwback. trying to find a, yeah, dude. Yeah. It's a good one. I would, but the size and everything, it's just right. I like that a lot, yeah. actually. Our, uh, that, it's called the Immunity because it was totally concepted, developed, produced during the pandemic. Um, so our designers really had a good time with that. And in the pivot screw there, uh, you'll actually notice there's a little Easter egg they tossed in and you can see a little COVID molecule on that pivot screw. So. You know, they get to have some fun over in the design side of things. That's awesome. What else you got? So moving on, we'll keep it in the black class for now then, staying in our tactical professional side of things. Uh, go into the 430 BK readout. This one right here, it's more of a full-size knife that you got um, and featuring CPM D2 steel. So moving over from just a standard D2 to a CPM. Uh, this is essentially this is our first kind of essential carry for the black class. Uh, a lot of our other knives there are usually, you know, your hardcore aluminum handles, right. titanium handles, something like that. And then your tool steels are a commonality in those models. Um, we wanted a knife that is going to be kind of the griptilian of the black class, so to speak. Um, and this is your just easy rider, everyday, rough and tough, beat it up. Um, you know, if you're 
a mechanic or anything like that, you don't want to be using your $250 knife, you know, popping carb caps off engines. So, right. That's what you're going to be using this for. Honestly, when I first saw this, uh, you guys announced this knife, I immediately was like, man, it's like a rugged and tough griptilian. Yes. It's really cool. Uh, amazing texture here. It doesn't scream too hot. You know, that's a it's a good size knife. I believe the uh, design engineering term for that is a uh, fat chunky waffle. Fat chunky waffle. You guys hear it here first. Fat chunky waffle. That's pretty funny. It's all the rage right now. I um, like that. And then that foregrip there too, kind of inspired by those uh, foregrips on the uh, polymer handguns. Oh yeah. You see that when you hold it vertical there, it, it's got that same look to it. That's right. And then that one also, new uh, kind of clip attachment. Not the, not the most exciting part of a knife, oh, but yeah. necessary. Oh. Super deep carry there, lets it sit even deeper in the pocket. Still interchangeable. Uh, you can do it yourself, still reversible as well. Uh, you know us with our axis lock, always keeping things ambidextrous. Um, just kind of a new little way to attach a clip for us. I like it actually because uh, uh, I've been slowly migrating to the deeper deep. I, I like the all the way in pocket clip. We've gone sits sits right just inside the, the pocket there. Yeah, we've gone one deeper. As soon as you thought we couldn't, we're going one deeper. Yeah, I like that. Dude, that's cool. Yeah, that's a great knife. Perfect. I guess we'll round off the black class here then and just stick with our shot special knife real quick. Uh, this is a new variant of the 273 Mini Adamas. This is the 273 GY-2201. Bit of a long one there. But same crew wear steel that we have on all the other Mini Adamases featuring a red micarta handle. Uh, I really love kind of the way that that dark micarta matches that uh, tungsten gray blade. Yeah. No, it's the, just slick. The colorway is really great. Uh, I love, I love dyed micarta. This is something very unique. You don't see this all the time, but the color variation with all the dark hardware and the darker blade, it really kind of yeah. makes it special, you know? Yeah. Flashy, but not too flashy. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Sweet. Moving on from there, I think there's another one I'm super excited about here for a fixed blade. New platform for a fixed blade. This is the 539GY Anonymous. Really what we were going for here was a good survival fixed blade for you. Um, everybody knows the Bushcrafter, great platform for bushcraft and everything. We want to kind of bring that then to the survival side and uh, it's the small things in this knife. It's the little things that make this knife awesome in my opinion. It's got crew wear steel, those G10 handle scales with a full tang of course. Uh, and the crew wear is what allows us to slim down that uh, stock of the, of the blade. So you don't have as thick of a blade stock like you would on the Bushcrafter. This one helps keep it lightweight. It's also got a full choil there that serves as a guard for yeah, when you're really hammering on it. Yeah, I was noticing that. That's actually nice. I think that's something that uh, some survival knives are missing is something to you know stop you. If you're doing any kind of stab motion, your hand will tend to slip yep. no matter how tight your grip is you know in a safety sit or in a survival situation safety is number one so right. whatever we can do to make that easier for you and then right there on that choil that's been machined out actually so that you can get a nice 90 degree edge perfect size for a ferro rod no more striking that on the spine of the knife you've got your own dedicated spot for it right there i like that that's, a, that's probably one of my least favorite is when you're striking a ferro rod and then all of a sudden it's just all burnt and scarred, you exactly. know? Exactly. Yeah. No, that's really nice. Yeah. I like this. It's a good size fixed blade. And it's so light with that crew wear, super slim. Yeah, that's cool. It's the beauty of crew wear, man. You do a lot with a little of it. And it comes with this nice full sheath right here. You've got hip carry options. As always, we try to give you options to carry it how you'd like. Um, it's all up to you, it's your knife, so carry it how you want to. Going from that, we'll go to, uh, this one we skipped over, but this is a nice little revisit for us. This is the Claymore that we launched last year. This time, we've done it in a straight blade. We did it in the serrated blade before. Uh, now we offer it in a straight blade. Personally, I'm a straight blade guy. I have no time yeah, for serrations. That's me too. Yeah, exactly, you know? so. Same steel, we're doing CPMD2, uh, and then those polymer handles. It's the claymore everybody knows and loves. Uh, just no serrations. 
I actually really like the Claymore a lot. It fits so well in my hand. Plus, it's nice because it has a smaller handle. So if you are gloved up, mm -hmm. it's not this big chunky boy in your hand. You yeah. know what I mean? No chunky boys here. No chunky boys. Uh, that one's cool. I like the Claymore a lot, actually. Yeah. That one was, I mean, I, I think a, a huge kind of theme that we're seeing now, especially with a lot of the knives that we're doing, is lightweight, but still keeping that strength and rigidity up. The Claymore was inspired by, you know, we learned that uh, your average soldier was carrying like 14 pounds of batteries alone on them. Really? And we were like, why would we weigh them down even an, an extra ounce with a knife? Uh, let's keep it lightweight while still maintaining some like serious structural integrity on that thing yeah um so strength and lightweight is a common theme throughout a lot of these black class knives that we're launching uh, it's really nice uh the claymore like i said it's one of my favorites the texturing on the handle oh man like i get i'm not a sandbox guy yeah never have been but if i were that's a good knife for deployment yeah i'm glad you brought up the texturing on it because the texturing it's uh, just like small little balls. It's supposed to look like ball bearings, which if you're familiar with what a real Claymore is, that's gonna be the projectile in that. And there's some nice uh, uh, Morse code at the front of the handle towards the blade there. If you know Morse, it's uh, FTE, which is what it's on the front of a Claymore, and that's front towards enemy. So I like that. our design that's team, cool. they love putting these Easter eggs in. I'm jealous of them. Honestly, the Easter eggs make it so fun as a knife owner to be like, hey, did you know about this with my knife? Check this out. Sometimes I don't even want to tell people about them. I want them to just discover it just on their own. Them. That makes it more fun. Right? That's cool. Uh, jumping into then another similar platform that we've done, but a bit of a variation on it, is the 533-3, the mini bug out. Same as the 535-3 that we did last year, carbon fiber with the S90V blade. It's got that really great blue backspacer that serves as a lanyard hole as well. That be, the full size version of that was my everyday carry. Uh, quickly, as, as soon as that came out, I was just like, All right, sorry 940, but this one's going in the pocket right now. Um, well, I've loved it. You know how I feel about bug outs, and the mini one is no exception. So to have you guys come out with this variation is really exciting actually because uh, I don't know about you guys but I like to have a matching pair yeah it's great that's cool what yeah. else you got we'll take a break from uh, the rough and tough and we'll go into our gold class knife of the year this is our limited unlimited knife that we do every year available for all of 2022 so get your orders in but then as soon as 2022 is over we're done with it um, this year, the platform we're doing is the 945. Um, like I just mentioned, I love a 940. That's my go-to. Right. So the Mini 940 excited me, and then to see the Mini 940 elevated to our gold class is just, it, it makes me really happy. And it's, they knocked this one out of the park, in my opinion. We've got a gear pattern Dana Steel here, um, which I believe is God of the Sea or something along those lines really kind of the whole inspiration around this i was told was uh the baltic sea and they, oh, okay. that's where they took a lot of that influence um you can see in the fat carbon handle scales it's kind of that dark stormy night on the sea look yeah, there like that, that nice aqua blue anodized bolster with the thumb stud to match and then just the cherry on top to me is that floating backspacer on the, that back. i was gonna say i don't know what you would call that but floating backspacer so you got barrels but then it's got this nice little it's gold spine a hybrid up. between barrel spacers and a back spacer it still keeps the back of the knife open so it's easy to blow any lint out or anything like that i right. just love it and that pop of gold right. you know it's just enough to kind of like really make it pop without being uh just too much i honestly i think it's really cool that gold is just to die for uh i'm really into that kind of thing a little flash mm -hmm. you know um man the fat carbon it's crazy. That's I love a 940s. That's a I love limited 940s even more. So that one's gonna be a must-have for me personally. That's cool. Yeah, that thing's gorgeous. Love it. We'll hop up, round everything off with the hunt line. We got a lot of really good hunt product coming out that I'm super stoked on. Uh, first one is the 15700 Flyway here. This. People have been asking for a bird knife for a long time from us. 
we hear you. Uh, and this time, I think we really delivered. Uh, really great smaller knife, but this thing is sharp as anything. Um, and it's great for capering. It's great for breasting out any foul. Um, it's just awesome. With CPM 154 as well, very reactive to infield sharpening if all you've got is a honing rod or anything like that. And then just the ergonomics of it, it allows you to get a good pencil grip on it too for when you're choking up and, and doing any breasting like that. Um, it's not going to take up too much room in your pack either. It knows what it does and it does it well. This thing is really cool. It's super slim, guys. Uh, very, very thin stock here on the blade. Uh, which is a good thing that yeah. you want with a bird knife. You want something light, but also nimble enough, almost like a scalpel. Exactly. You know? uh, yeah, breasting out birds and stuff, it's it's a little more intricate than big game. Yep, exactly. You know I mean? So, yeah, that's really cool. I actually really like that a lot. Good G10 handle scales on it, too. It's going to come with a Bolteron sheath, as most of our hunt, knife, hunt fixed blades do nowadays. Uh, Two-tone, I believe, black on one side, orange on the other for high vis. Um, Similar to this. Exactly. Kind of. Just picture it a lot smaller. No, I really like this. It actually has a really great contour and it fills in the little section right there on the pads of your yep. fingers and it just kind of grips in. Yep. It's really nice actually. And then popping one up. We have been, I mean, in case you haven't noticed already, uh, shootout, we've done the readout. Uh, we're really kind of expanding that bug out family and kind I of like bringing that. it to other lines, you know, bringing it outside of just everyday carry. Uh, we realized a lot of hunters are carrying bug outs on them out in the field. Uh, we figured why not give them a bug out of their own basically. Right here is the 15535 tagged out. Uh, it is, I like that name. Yeah, I love that Tagged too. Tagged out, that's cool. They, uh, same handle scales there as just a standard gribbery handle scale with cartridge liners. You've got those nice orange anodized backspacers to keep that back open. Uh, clip point blade, you've noticed we've done no thumb stud on this one. And that's just because we want to try to keep it low drag. If you're uh, pulling that out of your pocket, you don't want that thumb stud getting caught on any, on any of your gear. Um, so just super low drag super lightweight just like any other bug out would be and uh i i i'm really excited to see what everybody thinks about this one this is a fun this is a fun one yeah i like the big long clip that's really cool um i mean i've only tried like maybe three or four times but you can flick that right open yep uh just a couple times trying it is super lightweight very much like the bug out but man tagged out that's so cool yeah uh, CPM 154 blade on that one. You've got your mini deep carry clip as always um, on any of those bug outs. And, you know, just like we saw with the bug out, bug out really found its way outside of the everyday carry community. I mean, this one's intended for hunting, but I could see this finding its way into some people's everyday carry as well. Yeah. Um, Versatility is the key there. I like that. Yeah, you got a nice big slicey belly. That is nice. Yeah. And for me, I, uh, I'm a bow hunter, and so I'm. I don't count pounds or ounces, but it, it does matter. It does matter. When you're yeah. in the backcountry or you're at 11,000 feet or whatever, uh, that's Utah, you know, I mean, it, it starts to matter. Exactly. For sure. Get away from you real quick. Yeah. So for anybody that was wondering what if you put a crooked river blade on a bug out, there you go. That's what I was, the, <laughs> I was seeking that the whole time, but I didn't want to say it, but holy crap, it's a crooked river bug out. Yeah. That's at least what I thought when I first saw it. I love it. Yeah, it's cool. Way cool. Going up into the fixed blades again, this is the 15600 OR Raghorn. Uh, this is really kind of filling out the uh, premium end of a hunt fixed blade there. Um, and this is going to be great for your big game, your moose, your elk. Uh, it does have crew wear steel, so you can be a bit rough and tough with it. Keeps that blade thin again. Um, carbon fiber handle scales, and it does have some nice texturing uh, right before the tang there so that you can kind of get a bit more of a pinch grip on it um, and choke up on that as well with the jimping that's on the spine of the blade. Uh, this one really is to me, it's kind of like we had the altitude. What if we filled out the handles on it? That's, that's where my brain went with it. Right. Um, it, it's the grown up version. It's the big brother. It is. It really is. Nice and slim, just like the 
just like the altitude, which I love. I carry my altitude quite often, actually. Um, this is very interesting. Yeah. I want to try this. Yeah. We call that a like a Presidio pattern on that. Uh, very similar to the old style Presidio, still on our Presidios actually, um, but uh, just allows you. It, it gives you good friction there and lets you get a good purchase. So, and then that. You're seeing a lot of that uh, Cerakoted orange blade from us now, just for that high visibility. Right. I think color and visibility is something that we've really tried to focus on as of late, not only in the hunt line, but also in the black class, you know. For a long time, tactical was just black everything. Right. Um, but you don't realize that, like, true black actually is a contrast. Um, it's high contrast at the yeah. end of the day. So bringing in a more muted black with like a flatter blade is going to blend in with your surroundings. I was going to say, I'm like, dude, this is like hunter orange. That doesn't really blend, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. And, and honestly, I love the coloration that you guys are doing. It's a little, it's darker. It's a little, you know, more neutral, you know, I like that. Breaking yeah. up the colors. It's really cool. This is a fun knife and super, super thin guys, slicey. Man, I really want to try that. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one too, so. That's cool. I also like what you guys have done. It's also on your burnt knife, the little wave back here on the tang. Gives it something visually to be like, whoa. Yeah. Catches your eye for sure. Not just a plain tang on that one. Right. Um, and then going up into kind of, uh, you know, similar materials on this one, kind of similar, similar look on it. Uh, this is the 15500 OR-2 the latest installment of the Meat Crafter. Uh, this one, carbon fiber handle scales with, we're bringing back the S45VN on this one for you guys. We did the CPM 154 on the 15500. S45VN we did on a, another version of it, and it's just perfect for that push cut that you want to get out of a Meat Crafter. Yeah, I like that. The Meat Crafter is, is a win. I love the Meat Crafter, it's a great knife. I love that you guys have the S45. I actually really love this combination of the carbon fiber. It's nice weave of carbon fiber on these orange blades. It's really fun, really fun. And if that one's not your style, we're bringing in the 15500-3 uh, Meat Crafter again, two new variants for you. This one with the Olive Draft G10 handles, still an S45BN blade, uh, no Cerakote on this one obviously. And then I really like that just kind of touch of orange on the pivot ring. Yeah, the little ring. It's not a hunt knife unless it has some orange on it. Right. And, I mean, the green and orange, it's always good color color. Exactly. Contrast combination, you know. Meat Crafter is a winner for sure. I really enjoy that knife. Yeah, no brisket stands a chance with the Meat Crafter. <laughs> right. I like that. Um, got two left for you, and these ones are a little bit out of left field for us. I'm really excited about them. This is the Weekender. We're doing it in two different variants here. We've got an olive drab micarta, as well as a cool gray G10. Uh, both of them featuring S30V blade steel, but we've got ourselves here dual blade on this slip joint. It's kind of an evolution of the proper, I would say. Um, I like that. Kind of a canoe style there as well. And then you've got these brass colored pivot rings. Um, and then of course, Everybody wanted a bottle opener, so when you got to crack open a cold one with the boys or I like ladies, this. I like I like how it's a it's a minimalist uh, bottle opener because so many of them are so chunky out there. You know what I mean? Exactly. Really minimal, right on the back. I like the action on it; kind of slips out, but you know it's going to stay in there. Um, it's like it's the right angle too to get that leverage easy. We did a lot of research on that. Let's say that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. The research was strong with this group. That's a cool knife. With a dual uh, bladed knife, you know, you can kind of afford to have one, as I like to call it, a sacrificial blade. Yeah. Uh, and then one blade that you want to kind of keep yeah, looking nice and pretty. Yeah, one that you, uh, you use. Exactly. So uh, that's, that's that's my cool. thought process with that. I personally love the micarta with the pop of orange on the pivot rings here. Um, I just love that colorway. It's super classic, but it's got a bit of a modern look and that kind of canoe style shape there. Uh, it's really? fun. Yeah. When I saw when I saw this, I was like, 
whoa, okay, that's different. That's not that's not your typical bench made. Yeah. Which I think is fun. It's not your grandpa's slip joint either. Right, exactly. No, it's super fun. You guys have a, an amazing line coming out in 22, 22, excuse me. And man, there are some of these I'm super excited about. I can't wait to get my hand on one of these. I, you've had your eye on those immunities all day, so. Oh yeah. They'll yeah, be, those be coming out soon. I'm super stoked and each one of these immunities, I think I forgot to mention this one, but each one of them is coming in all three of these colors. It's not exclusive to oh, each one. Okay. So essentially nine brand new models out like of just that. that immunity family. Dude, that's a cool knife. Uh, man. Guys, the price point on this, how light it is for an OTF, and it's not... You, I mean, you get some of those OTFs, and they're a little tinny, and you yeah. know, this one is, especially for pins, mm -hmm. dude, this thing's tight. It's really tight, actually. I, li I like it a lot. Yeah, I could talk for days about the shootout alone, um, but I mean, that one with the, uh, what's cool about it is that it's got the stainless steel liners on the inside, and the handles aren't load-bearing at all. It's all on the liners on the inside. That's the cool. handles are just for you to hold on to. And then the sound of it too. We actually like really worked hard to dial in the sound on it. You it's, know, it's like it's if, you, nice. if you hear a Ducati go by, they tune their engines so that you know a Ducati goes by. Right. If you hear that, you know it's a shootout. Yep, I like it. It kind of sounds like a pump shotgun. It does. Like yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> or it's got like the two tone of yeah. racking the slide. Anyway, man, this is really cool stuff. I'm super excited. Dude, thanks for having us here, showing us all your cool stuff, man. Thanks for stopping by. Dude, Nate, it's been a pleasure, man. Absolute pleasure. Great seeing you guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, if you guys like this content, make sure you guys like, subscribe, jump over here for more SHOT Show content in the playlist. And uh, man, Nate, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll catch you guys on the next one.